So since I've started covering embers, and I think I was the first person to ever cover an ember RV, I've heard the same thing over and over. They have no campsite windows. I don't know if I'm going to get enough airflow. Well, uh, guess what, Carol Baskin? That's a thing of the past. Because in typical ember format, maybe you've seen this floor plan before? <laughs> I guarantee you've never seen it quite like this. This is the new 29RS or MRS. I call her the Mrs. If you go with the optional kind of like uh, Murphy office bedroom crazy creation situation over here. Um, this is a, a very common layout in general where you've got opposing living room slides, uh, island in the kitchen, uh, private bathroom, private bedroom. But there's so many little tweaks and twists on this one, I don't know really where to begin, so I'm gonna start from the top down. How about the fact that they have a six foot 10 ceiling clearance? They're 82 inches tall inside, which is awesome for big guys like me in the shower, or big ladies, I don't, I don't know your life. Maybe you're an Amazon from American Gladiators, I'm not sure. Uh, you've got a true queen bed up front, which has the option of staying just a normal fixed bed. And they've added some headboard pocket storage with power solutions and stuff back there, it's awesome. Or you can option into what I call the Mrs., the MRS, uh, with the Murphy bedroom, which can work as an office, it can work as a craft space, it can work as cargo space, and up in the bedroom, you have not just another big closet, uh, it's also washer dryer prep. So Ember kicking everything up a notch here the way that they typically do. You have your choice between like a, a you know park hopper for the Midwestern people like me, or you can get their solar package, which is 400 watts with a 2000 watt inverter. And you can a la carte battleborn batteries, or you can give our team a call and we can assist you with that. They have their full composite wall floor system here. Um, and the way that they ducted the air conditioning in this is brilliant. Um, I, I talked to them about this and they said, you know, so many RVs, the biggest cavity, the living room and kitchen where the opposing slides are, actually get the least amount of airflow because a lot of times the second air conditioner is mounted in a bedroom. Well, that keeps the bedroom like an ice box, which is great, but that's easier to do because it's a smaller room already. So they actually mounted both centrally ducted air conditioners in the living room. But what you can do is open the cold air dump on one of those if you want. You can dump all the air from that air conditioner in the living room and still have the other air centralized, maintaining a cool, comfortable temperature in the bedroom and bathroom. It's just little tweaks like that in their window package on this. Oh, it's awesome. And it's been a while since I went through one of these, but I, I won't lie. I'm, I'm sweet on Ember. I really always have been. I, I appreciate what they do, and there's a lot of thought that goes into what they do. Like, their floor plan catalog might not be the most earth-shatteringly original thing, although those MSL bunk-like adjustable things are definitely really cool. Um, a floor plan like this is very, you know, rank and file. But again, they've really executed it very well in a lot of ways. I haven't closed the slides. I'm eyeballing it right now. I'm not sure we're going to maintain access to the kitchen and road mode, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. First of all, man, you could land a jumbo jet with all the lighting that they run down the roof of this sucker. And uh, it's all on a dimmer switch, like right over here by the entry door. And my camera gets a little finicky when the lights start going down. It starts flickering a little bit. So I don't want to give somebody a seizure, anything like that. But, um, you know, if you want to dim the lights out, you could also dim the awning lights, which is very cool. They're just doing touches that you don't find everywhere else. Like their whole floor system, it's a, it's a fully composite floor, basically. Uh, it, it doesn't really have wood in the structure of it. Now, where they have to lag through the aluminum uh, tubes to, like, screw everything together, they might stuff that with wood, but... Basically, the floor is purely composite, which is uh, very cool. Basically, meaning water can't rot the sucker. By default, you're going to have a single 15,000 BTU air conditioner. These are 50 amp, though. But the way that they put both air conditioners here in the living room is very different from what you normally see. And I think it's kind of brilliant. Because one of the things that you can do, if it's really, really hot and you're dying here in the living room, you can leave both air conditioners open here in the biggest cavity of the RV and dump all the cold air in here. But I think what I would do most of the time is I would shut this one so that that is still pumping central air into my bedroom and bathroom because it's closest to the bedroom and bathroom. And I would leave the back one dumping all the cold air here into the living room. And I think that that would make a very comfortable RV. The window package that Ember uses with these Euro style windows 
Uh, we're going to talk more about that when we go outside, but that is also a factor that is really helping them uh, maintain more comfortable cabin temperatures. Over here on the campsite, you've got a uh, carpetless floor flush slide. These are very pet friendly. Overall, as RVs, you don't see, um, you know, vents in the floor, anything like that. And the windows, look at this. I mean, what other RV video can I, can I pull a stunt like this where we literally stick the camera outside, you know? The airflow that you get off these is absolutely unmatched. Now, you might be wondering, yeah, but, you know, what if I don't want a wide open window? All of these don't, you notice how they don't have those big boxy curtains and things? They all have a, oops, I gotta close that, idiot. Have a day section and a night section. And you can kind of pick your poison. Now, there is a hiccup with that. I like to tell you the good with the bad. If you have like the day shade pulled to give you uh, to help keep the bugs out when you close the window and then drop the shade, there's bugs trapped in between there that can then get into the RV. So you want to kind of consider that a little bit. You know, if it is if you camp in super bug country, well, it might not be the uh, ideal setup for you necessarily. The location of the household and USB outlets. How many times have we looked at big RVs that, that they put them like all the way on the floor? Well, the problem is most USB cables can't reach where you need them to. Now, that's not a problem. I think I mentioned it, but these are 6 foot 10 inside. For some reason, I thought they were 7 foot, but evidently they're 6 foot 10. I got corrected on that today. So, uh, again, I won't always claim to be an authority. I don't always claim to get it all right. I do my best. If I make a mistake, I'll tell you. It's never by intention. Uh, electric space heat and fireplace down there. And as soon as I saw that, I asked, what's behind it? There's some storage outside. We're going to get to see that. Now, this is prototype number one. They're going to put some household and USB outlets in that little cavity right there. So if you want to add a Blu-ray player, uh, you know, anything like that, you'll have a perfect little place to do that. And it's a 12-volt entertainment system. The TV basically is the sound bar. Everything just runs right through that, which means you don't have this whole mess of wires going through the RV, uh, you know, causing all sorts of like potential failure, short points and whatnot. And they have tweaked their decors here on the touring edition a little bit. This will trickle around to the rest of the touring family. To me, this looks almost like uh, an old wicker rocking chair. But um, I guess it's called seagrass is the, the pattern on it or something like that. But here's the thing. There's so many of these RVs. When you step inside them right now, it looks like you're in some like like some Vegas hotel room. And you're it's like an experience, you know. And then there's RVs that are just all super dark HOA brown. Occasionally, you'll get something with a gray tone. This is lighter. It's comfortable. And it just feels warm and like welcome home, you know? That's how I read it. That's how I interpret it. But that's that's my kind of nerdy little insight into the thing. I'll also not claim to be an interior decorator. Now, somebody earlier asked me, uh-oh, they screwed up. Why is the fan crooked? Because the fan follows the uh, the taper of the roof line. So the fan's not crooked. The fan is flush with the exterior where it is mounted. It just kind of looks a little funky on the inside. But it also angles air inside the RV. 12-volt compressor fridge. They've always been doing that. They're going to keep doing that. And they are now finally doing convection air fryer microwave ovens. Uh, and that will persist all the way down through the um, the Overland models, too. That was a major thing a lot of people were asking for at Overland. They finally have accomplished that, found a, a supplier that will work with them um, in the quantity that they need. There were suppliers available, but they couldn't keep up with Ember's production. A larger oven down there, and, and that's one of the major differences between these smaller Overlands and these bigger Tourings. This is something where if you want to really spend some extended time in it, this is where you want to be right here. You've got a lot more, of the, like, you know, you, the traditional oven. The, the normal things that kind of you expect to see and find in a home, they maintain here. And how many times in all, I, I, I don't even know if I could count all the times that people said, Ember floor plans never have campsite windows. Well, they have solved that quandary. The, the reason they've been lacking campsite windows is not because they're opposed to them. It's just the floor plants that they've been building, by coincidence, happen to not have a lot of campsite window coverage. And notice over here, you also have a privacy shade factory standard built right into that entry door, and that is a wider uh, entry door. Now, diving into some deeper details, it does come with a pair of fold-away guest chairs here for the freestanding table. And notice how they maintain storage all the way across the slide-out 
uh, above the windows. And I'm curious, would you rather have the bigger windows or would you rather have more storage? And keep in mind with the RV being a little bit taller, you're already getting bigger windows than some brands tend to provide regardless. That is also a wider, uh, like three adult seating size uh, sleeper sofa in the back with some cool little storage pockets on both the right and left side. There's also storage behind the TV, above the TV, the TV overhead cabinet there that opens is on a magnet. All the shelf uh, space inside the pantry uh, is adjustable. I threw my backpack in there to give it uh, some sort of sense of scale. I didn't throw it. I set it in there very carefully because it's got my laptop. Shut up, Josh. You know what I mean. Sorry. Squirrel. I'm stupid. Um, all the drawers in the kitchen are a soft close uh, residential style drawer. And did you notice the kitchen countertop extension? I intentionally put the cutting board sink cover on that to demonstrate the fact it is counter flush. And that is something almost no manufacturer tends to do because it's a little bit harder for production. It takes the, uh, the, the line laborer a little more time to line things up appropriately. So most manufacturers, they don't make it countertop flush so that it gives the worker a little more leeway if they do it right or don't do it right, you know? Um, that's, uh, that's just the extra kind of little details that you're, you're going to find on here. And then we move our way up to the bathroom. Although I gotta say... Those light fixtures are cute. And yeah, I said cute, but don't worry about it because I'm going to go hang some sheetrock around an engine I'm rebuilding while eating some red meat later to get my man card back. Whatever. Now sliding forward into the uh, the bathroom area here, we got ourselves a drunken octopus fight club over on the left uh, trying to start some trouble with a couple towels that you see over there. Oh, before I forget, even up here in the touring series, they're still using the um, the shower miser system. That's a, a water saving, basically recycler system. Uh, that if you're going to be off grid you, and you kick on your water heater, you don't want to wait for the cold water to come out. That blue thing will turn white when the water's hot. You flick the switch. Now you got hot water. No water wasted. And uh, I don't know what they're telling us here. It probably just because it matches the decor. But we got a black loofah flying that. Um, in certain circles, has some very specific meanings, but we're not going to get into that right now. That's that's not the kind of videos I make <laughs> when you know you know. Anyway, um, I will say Google it, but do so at your own risk. You see, there's plenty of room around that porcelain foot flush toilet right there. And one of my only kind of surprises uh, in, in not a positive way, again, trying to share good with bad, is just a common plastic sink in the bathroom. They do so many other things really, really nicely. But that's just kind of one of the very few that I'm like, huh, really? Well, I guess, okay. I mean, it's fine. It's just, I just almost expect something greater. I don't know. Um, what's also cool on these, you see these amber lights in the Ember RVs. First of all, they're not using Disco Jedi Blue, but um, they are using those amber lights. Now, one switch will activate all of them through the entire RV. And you can see how there is storage behind that big backlit medicine cabinet. And one of the ideas I would like to see is get rid of one of the shelves below the sink and give me a spot for a wastebasket. That would make a lot of sense to me. And if I back up a little bit more, you may also notice how they are not using the peekaboo I smell you bathroom doors right here. Everything is going to be fully privatized, whether it's the bathroom or the bedroom. And both the bathroom and bedroom doors actually lock. So if you do have a guest on the hide bed you can maintain a little more privacy. Or not. I don't I don't know your life. Anyway, now moving up front here, we are in the misses today. The MRS, the, the just plain 29 RS, will just have a 60 by 80 True Queen fixed bed up here. It won't have their little optional um, kind of Murphy station situation. Now it includes two of these uh, lagoon tables. Uh, one mounts on each side of the sofa. Both uh, can store under the sofa if you're not using it. And uh, you see the little mounting bracket over there. And what's cool about that is during the day, let's say that you're doing some mobile work office station stuff. You could be a little bit of a laptop warrior in here because they put household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. And you'll see later in just a second, there's household and USB outlets behind both of the hanging wardrobe towers. And I like how the decor is very consistent through the entire uh, RV. But again, you don't necessarily have to get this bed arrangement. Uh, before we get to that, though, that big stargazer skylight up top here, just once again, letting in crazy awesome airflow with those max airflow fully opening windows all the way around the RV. But like I was saying, 
um, you, you, you know, you don't have to get the folding bed. If you don't care about the whole Murphy bed concept, you don't have to get that. If you want to get just a conventional 60 by 80 true queen bed, that's what you get by default in this floor plan. Then you can get the MRS with the Murphy if you want. Um, there's storage below it either way. And again, you've got uh, dresser drawer storage. Uh, you've got hanging closet storage. You have storage above the bed with cabinet doors that actually hold themselves open on, you know, all the way across the top of the bed. And then across from the bed, you have a giant set of dresser drawers with another big closet, a shelf that can fold up out of the way if you want more hanging space, or you can fold it down for like, you know, dresser space. And you can clearly see it is prepped and ready for washer dryer. It would be set for a combo unit. I don't know that you could put a stackable in here, but uh, you know that's that's what you get. And then across from the bedroom, you want to throw a uh, well in the bedroom across from the bed. You can throw a TV up here against the wall. I almost kind of feel like if you're going to use it as an office function, it would be kind of cool to have maybe a second TV backer down here. But I don't know. That's just those little things. That's basically the kind of picky level I have to get to find something like, you know, a switch for the ceiling lights in this extra tall RV right when you walk in or more of those amber lights where you flick one switch and you can actually kind of nighttime navigate through the whole rig. But I'm looking at it again. I think we're about to run into this one's Achilles heel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I thought was going to happen. Now, I mean, it's tight. Like, if you got a Pomeranian, they could slip through there. There's no way an adult's going to fit through that. Unless you're going to somehow belly army crawl and snake your way around this thing. Ain't going to work. Um, one of the things that you'll hear me talk about in a lot of my videos, though, is the, the fact that the stable steps over here, they actually stick out further than the slide when it's extended. And a lot of times, that means that if you can open the steps, you can open the slide, you can get to the kitchen. Does that really apply here? Well, you hear me talk about that in my videos all the time. If you open just the door side slide, which you can do because this has a big quad step because it rides on such a big chassis. Um, if you can fold the steps down, you have the room to open this super slide. But it doesn't actually fix the problem or change the equation because the refrigerator is still blocked by the kitchen slide. They, they had to kind of make a decision which way they were going to go, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles on this one. Now, they certainly have plenty of other models that have excellent travel accessibility, but this one right here is going to be best used at your destination. And I hope you appreciate that I go out of my way to take the extra time to show this stuff for you, because I get that that might blow up a deal. You might have been like, man, I was going to buy it right up until then. Well, if you appreciate the work we're doing, at least like the video and tell us, hey, thanks, nerd. And when Ember does those Ember things, something happens. As I remember, um, I feel like there's a joke there and I just kind of, I failed it. But anyway, I'll move on from that. They, they get a little bit bigger. They get a little bit heavier. This is not intended to be your starter class camper. And if it is, you are definitely getting your second or third camper the first time. That's for sure. But as a result, something like this with the length, the opposing slides, the weight, all those factors, I would probably generally recommend three quarter ton pickup and uh, up there. Now up front on these, you've got that um, smart jack. And what that will do is when you get unhitched from your vehicle, it will remember the height that the nose had to be to accomplish that. So when you go to get rehitched in your vehicle, basically you just press you know, the get me hitched button and it will take itself right back where it needs to be. Now, I got two of the same things side by side here, which is giving me some awesome AB footage I don't normally get a chance to capture. Like that's the sky uh, Stargazer Skylight, Skygazer, yeah, why not? We'll just call it that. That sounds like the next rip off and duplicate name from some RV company. Our new thing this year is the Skygazer. Anyway, one open, one closed. Now some people have said, yeah, but what if you forget to close that going down the road? Well, what if you forget to close your entry door or your baggage door? I mean, I don't I, I don't think it's Ember's fault if a person doesn't remember to do stuff, so I don't really hold, kind of hold them accountable for that. It is less obvious though, but there is like a little wind fairing that helps protect the front of that so that wind doesn't get under that seal and try to lift that thing up when you are going down the road, although it has like six latches from the inside. Now these touring editions, they have a big front pass-through cavity. And that is the box for the uh, telescoping ladder that used to be optional. They said, you know, it's dumb. We should just standardize that. So it's all included. But what's really cool about this, I happened to look up here. I was like, oh, cool, a table. And they really use that dead space in the ceiling of the camper very nicely. And let me see if I can do this with one hand. Uh, I think, yeah, look at that. You just push that up. 
it drops down, and then you can just pull this table out. So the table is up out of the way, and then you push a button, and it drops down to where you need it. And that's cool! Um, up front here, we've got, of course, that little gearbox, you know, protecting your batteries, your propane, all that kind of good stuff. And a lot of people look at this and they think it's just nose cap lighting. This is actually a blind spot indicator. You're going to see the radar. This thing literally shoots radar out of its butt when you're going down the road. If there's somebody right in your blind spot, that light will ignite so that you can check your rear view mirror at a glance and know if it's safe for you to merge lanes or not. Like, actually, this is cool. So the RV is backed up right against the shop right now. So these beams are lit up so that at a glance i know for a fact where i'm supposed to be now i don't know if it, that's how it's appearing on camera but on my viewfinder on my camera here um it looks like it's pulsing like the the starship enterprise that's not what it actually does that just might be uh, a goofy thing the way digital cameras process information i've noticed their baggage doors have remained nice and thick they haven't gone chintzing things out they haven't decontented the way the uh, industry, generally speaking, as a whole has. You've got that Nautilus-style docking center over there with all your poles, uh, you know, for your tanks and everything, all in one little kind of nicely condensed location. Prepped and ready for a full observation suite, which is great. And they're using a, uh, a Norco frame system. They're not using the traditional uh, Lippert I-beam frame, which is fine in some applications, but Ember, I probably just, they want to do everything they could to be different, <laughs> if I had to guess. That would kind of make sense to me. Now, anywhere that you're seeing fiberglass, there's Asdell behind it. Um, so your, uh, you know, the inside and outside layers of the RV, all, all Asdell, basically. Uh, and your floor um, it is also composite. It's a wood-free flooring solution, although, um, I have said in the past there's not a splinter of wood in the construction of this. I guess I, I got ahead of myself and I got a little too excited. Technically speaking, yes, there are some splinters of wood in this where they do screw into their structure. They will stuff it with wood to make sure they don't over crunch something. That's a very industry standard practice, but I want you to know what you're getting into here. Standard dual power awning, so you don't got to worry about accidentally not optioning one on or anything like that. And again, these max airflow style windows. So one of the crazy things about these windows is they have 3.66 times the R value of a common RV single pane window. That's phenomenal. That's one of the reasons they're they're vastly sound dampening. Like when you close all, yeah, when it's wide open, you're gonna hear nature, which frankly I don't mind because I'm camping, man. But when you open them up, you're gonna hear everything. You're gonna hear the neighbors. That's just kind of what happens when you open a window. But if you wanna do a better job of keeping the sun outside or the cold air outside, whatever the case may be, these windows are, as far as I know, about the best things available out there. You might say, yeah, but what about these RV dual pane or thermal pane windows? I've got a whole video dedicated to myth busting this topic. These are still two and a half times more insulating in terms of R value, even as compared to thermal pane RV windows, which are two sheets of glass glued together. There's no hollow gas charge. They're not residential thermal panes like people think. So they are two and a half times better than the best glass, glassed with a T, glass used uh, by even high end fifth wheel builders that rocks and you want airflow <laughs> man they smoke frameless windows for airflow because the only way a frameless window can open for that kind of airflow is if it's broken <laughs> and that is not what i think you want to go to and notice uh the slide sides those are more traditional windows they still slide open for airflow but they couldn't exactly uh they didn't want to do a, a window that tilts open and then you close the slide you know and, and bust it now over here, this is the radar. It looks like extra taillights, but you've already got your taillights with your reverse travel indicators back here. The extra boxes that you see on each side of the RV, that's the radar it throws out of the butt. And if you've ever gone down the road and like you flick on your turn signal to change lanes and a semi-truck driver, they kind of dim their lights and then flash them back on to let you know the road, the, the way is clear, in case you didn't know that's what they're communicating with you, uh, that you know, you're clear to change lanes. Um, about the time that, that that like somebody's in your blind spot light goes out, it's crazy. That's like right exactly the time that truckers uh, seem to, to flash their lights at me. I helped haul one of these Ember Tourings to one of our RV shows once. I had that personal experience and I, I thought it was awesome. I really liked what they did there. Now, it's not just prepped for the telescopic removal ladder. Remember, those are included with these. And as soon as I stepped inside, I looked, I saw the floor plan. 
and I asked myself immediately what's behind the fireplace. Because like regular viewer, Mr. Aaron Thor, if you're out there, I appreciate you. I am like you. I don't like space going to waste. So it's kind of nice to know behind the fireplace, they utilize this for storage. Now they were one of the very first that ever discussed using uh, these LCI quick drop stabilizers. And those things, they are, they live up to the hype for sure. But we're back up here by the front of the RV, by the front pass through. You can see how it's actually a mini drop frame. You do have a gas grill quick connect. We are fully enclosed. It is forced air heated. Um, they have to holding tank heaters standard on these and ember actually does cold chamber and test their rvs to verify zero to 100 degree functionality with guarantees with proof not just promises so it's a nice sunny day let's talk solar what do you got on these well with the touring edition you know it's not necessarily intended to get off the beaten path the way the overland series embers are that's what they're made for um but it's not that these are necessarily incapable, but it's sort of one of those things, either you're in or you're out, they don't really do anything in between, which sounds like I don't like, I don't like that option, but it also kind of makes sense to me. Anyway, by default, you have solar prep on the roof. You've got a uh, plug uh, on the ground level for like a portable panel um, and they're inverter prepped. Now, if you get their solar package, there's not like multiple layers of it. It's 400 watts of solar, a 2000 watt inverter that is live powering every outlet through the whole house. Um, it doesn't connect to the microwave. It doesn't connect to the fireplace or the air conditioner, but any you know normal appliance outlet, you're gonna be able to run all that stuff off battery power uh, to, with the solar to help offset it. Now, keep in mind, you start running an inverter uh, to pull juice off your battery, you pull juice off your battery more quickly. But that's another thing they do. They let you option Battleborn batteries a la carte. Of course, you can always contact our stores at Bish's RV and we can assist you with all kinds of different battery solutions too. But that's how Ember do. Now, uh, you know, I've got kind of a rolling catalog of Ember footage going on. The things that you're seeing here in the Touring Edition, like the decor updates, that will absolutely apply across the board to the rest of the Touring Edition family. Now, this is a new model, but when this video comes out, I may not even have one in stock yet. So if you check that link in the video description, visit our website to see what the going price on one of these is, may not have anything there to return for you. Contact our local Ember stores and we're happy to take care of that. But over time, that should resolve. We should start getting more of these in stock. And I'm curious, what do you think about this one? And like I said, they, they took the same floor plan everybody did. And for lack of a better way of saying it, Ember did some Ember things, but that's kind of always what they do. So thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Let me know what you think about it. Bye.